Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And uh, we watched a the Christmas, Christmas horror, horror Story. story. Which, uh, for those of you who uh, uh, don't know what that is, you might have seen advertising for this on various horror sites. It is the other Krampus movie that is not the Asylum one nor the Michael Doherty one. It is the one in which the poster has Santa Claus up against Krampus like it's going to be some sort of battle royale. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The trailer makes it look like that's the, what's going to That's the, tra the trailer totally markets it that way too. But what we didn't know going in is that it's actually a horror anthology film yeah. set, on Krimp set on Christmas in the same town. And one of those stories involves Santa Claus, you know, going up against the Krampus, um, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, first off, if you if you if you're on my channel right now and you want to know my thoughts on the other Krampus movie, the Michael Doherty one that's currently in theaters, that will pop up right around here. Um, uh, we did it for Count Jackula's channel, and uh, it's much like in this format where we basically just shoot the shit about the movie and yep. how we felt about it. But the uh, short version, we kind of liked really it. Really liked it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, uh, now on to a Christmas horror story. Man, I actually pretty liked. I like this. I like yeah, this. yeah. I was a little scared there, like partway through the third reel. Yeah, yeah. Because one, the the good thing is, is that the main story is really awesome. Yes. The side stories are middling to awful. Yes, yes. Um, and you're gonna be like, you're gonna get like halfway through this movie, and you're like, what are you talking about? All these stories are great. And then you get to the resolution of two of them, and you're going to be like, what? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Let's see. The stories we got here, we got um, we got the wraparound, which involves uh, 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 Shatner. William Shatner yeah. as this, D as this uh, DJ, this, this uh, radio DJ um, named Dangerous Dan. Dan, yeah. Um, who's basically, uh, basically he's just drinking up a storm and talking about the values of Christmas that we've lost over time and, and, and just basically talking about shit that's happening around town and apparently there's some sort of like holdup at some sort of mall going down that he's randomly talking about and giving us like little, little, uh, insights in as, as it cuts back to him as the movie goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you get the feeling like there's all this stuff, despite the fact that we're watching like four stories that happen in this one town, we get the feeling like there's way more stuff yeah, going on. Yeah, there's stuff that we're not time. seeing. Yeah, it reminded me a lot, the, the similarities between it and trick-or-treat yeah which is funny given that the, the, the other Michael, krampus is done by the trick-or-treat yeah, guy yeah. but this yeah. one felt like the trick-or-treat for christmas kind of it did actually the funny um it's not as well known yet but it felt a little bit closer to tales of halloween oh okay that's a good call that's a yeah. good call um tales from halloween was a really great uh another another um halloween anthology film set on halloween set in the same town much like this one is for christmas yeah um but much like tales for halloween n not as good as Trick or Treat, but still yeah, pretty yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> although I, I still think Tales of Halloween is a little bit better than Christmas Horror. It is. It yeah, is just overall. Most most of the storylines in a Tales from Halloween are very satisfying, whereas there's a couple here that aren't. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like the main story is extremely satisfying. Um, the next story we got is uh, Santa Claus in his workshop and his. Elves are slowly being infected with some sort of, like, zombie virus. Yeah, yeah. The, the elves he, are turning into zombies and attacking it. And he's pretty sure Krampus is behind it, so it's basically him going throughout his Santa's workshop, fighting uh, fighting his elves and, and his wife and things as they've all turned into these zombies and trying to find Krampus so that he can settle this once and for all. Yeah. Um, uh, that one is a really fun story. Not getting into spoilers yet, but that one is really fun. Yeah, there is <laughs> another one, which is about three kids who go into the basement of their school mm -hmm. because there was a murder there last year around Christmas and the this one girl wants to do a Blair Witch style documentary yep. on the murder. Mm -hmm. And she wants to basically break into the uh, news scene. Um, she's basically, she's, obviously they're all high school kids. Yeah. And she basically wants to do this as her, as, as, as her way of breaking into like, like being a news anchor and being like an actual journalist. Um, and she ropes her friends along. One of them's obviously a, a tech guy with sound and the other yeah. one's obviously a cameraman. Um, and there's a fourth friend who uh, helps get them, who helps steal the keys for the, for the school that they're breaking into so they can go after hours to break into the school and, you know, uh, basically go to the location where the murders happen and uh, do some sort of Blair Witch documentation of it. Um, 
that other girl who stole stuff then goes off and has her own story. Yeah, with with her family as they go mm-hmm. to visit their grandmother. Yeah, yeah. I think it's her grandmother. It's either her grand. Well, it's like her dad's mom, so something that would like be that. Her grandmother, yeah, yeah. So. I, th- I think so. I think you're right. But I, it was very clear that they're going there for some sort of like like the dad has some sort of plan, like some sort of financial plan. Yeah, like wants to extort money out of her or something. It's not quite clear, but that's kind of the vibe you get and. Based on his fate, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's kind of that's kind of what he reveals to be the truth, um, uh, and that one is a storyline that also involves the Krampus um, because that whole storyline is supposedly taking place um, as uh, uh, on Krampus Knot. I yeah, think what, yeah, what like, which is really weird on the timeline, but whatever. yeah, yeah, because Krampus Knot is not Christmas Eve. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think. I think the other Krampus movie also had Krampus show up on Christmas Eve, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> eh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. whatever. Um, so, uh, uh, there's that storyline. Um, there's the cop who first discovered the murder that the kids are investigating. There's a leaked leaked video of, of the cop uh, going onto the crime scene and just shit, weird shit happening, which is what prompts the kids to yeah. want to go in there themselves. And that cop has uh, been essentially relieved of his duty for mental reasons, um, and is uh, his storyline involves him and his his family going off to go cut down a tree, and the kid goes missing, and but they but when they find him, he's not quite right. Yeah, yeah, um, something has happened to him. Um, and I think is that all the storylines? Am I um, forgetting any? I think I. I think that okay. So we got Santa versus Krampus. We yeah. got we got kids the in the basement. Around. We got the wraparound. We got people go visit grandma and then the cops. Yeah. story. Okay, so that's so all that's five. all of them. Yeah, all five, all five. All righty then. Um, uh, to, to be non spoilery, um, wraparound and the Santa one, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty good. Um, uh, the the one with the kids has some legitimately creepy moments. But it has it has the best scares in the movie, yeah. but it also has the worst resolution. Oh, oh god, that re- I actually I think it's a contender for for the uh, oh. for the Krampus not one. Yeah, I think that one's a contender for worst ending. <laughs> oh, those were because, bad. Uh, but but like yeah, that the the one with the ghost kids has some of some legitimate scares. Like I actually jumped at a couple moments, and they actually got me. And there's some creepy imagery, but it ultimately culminates into meh. Oh. Yeah, and it's the one that is the least connected to all the others, yeah. so it feels super super. Like, you get the idea, because there's some sort of connection to a virgin birth, so it's kind of connecting back to, like, Jesus and, like, like the Virgin Mary and stuff, but yeah. the I, rest of the movie is so much more, like the act like the like like the Krampus kind of yeah, mythology. Yeah, Krampus and Santa Claus kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so like know. it feels so out of place in the rest of the movie, personally. Yeah. Um, it's it's like it's 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 weird because like the all the other stories are somewhat are mythological or urban mythological. Yeah, yeah. But that one is like straight up like a religious horror story. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, well, that feels weird. Yeah, it, 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 it'd be like if in the middle of Trick or Treat or whatever, there was a segment that was, like, insidious. Like, yeah, Which would have yeah. felt really out of place, even for a Halloween movie. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it would have felt wrong. Um, so, uh, so uh, uh, Ghost Kid won. Good scares, meh, culmination. Mm. Uh, the one with the Krampus monster going on a rampage, um, it's fun when the Krampus is killing things. Oh yeah, Krampus is killing things, that's great. That's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, has the most unlikable cast of characters, and not in the way that you really even like to see them die you just would rather them not be there yeah yeah they get well it's it's weird because the mo- it doesn't get ghoulish enough no it doesn't for it to justify having the characters become so because, unlikable because that one is essentially Krampus the slasher movie yes and, yeah. and, and you were kind of, and I kind of wish they went more 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 that yeah like, yeah went chased that a little bit more hardcore you know um because that one's also the goriest one you yeah got like like well besides the, the Santa fighting all the zombie elves um, oh yeah but I mean like the the the, the Krampus knocked one is like you know like chains coming out of the forest and ripping people apart. yeah yeah which is pretty rad you know? but and, and in that one he's basically like Jason Voorhees Krampus running around picking people off one by one yeah um, but like the, the end of that storyline almost kills the whole thing it is yeah. so 
they just give this last minute explanation for why the Krampus is there that we'll go into in the spoiler section that just uh, is really unsatisfying. Feels like they should have set that up earlier on. Yeah, they should have set that and up. And it also yeah. just, I, we'll go into it more when we go into spoilers, but it just feels too easy. It was, too, yeah. <laughs> Way yeah, too easy. Really too easy. Um, and uh, the story with the cop, um, I actually really liked that one. Um, I, I felt like it could have had a more epic conclusion yeah yeah it felt like it needed a, a bigger conclusion yeah, like it needed one it more just kind of fizzles out yeah you know? yeah it's, it it's ends not... it resolves but then yeah yeah, yeah you just kind of feel like there should have been just one more some sort of beat something there. yeah yeah you another know? beat you know um, not necessarily a scare but a something yeah but know? that one in my opinion was better than the other two oh yeah ones. definitely definitely <laughs> it didn't it didn't insult me oh absolutely absolutely you know um, so I don't think we can continue this anymore without going into spoilers. So short version, it's pretty fun. It's not as good as the one in theaters, um, which is fucking awesome and just a well-crafted movie. This is some so-so acting. It's not as well constructed <laughs> as we've gone into with some of the segments. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a lot of fun and it's a hard R unlike the one in theaters. Yes. So you get a whole lot of bloodshed. And some actual sexuality at parts, but no no boobs, which would have been really yeah, cool. That would have been well. It's especially considering the context in which it had happened. Like tits would have should have been the first thing that happened. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know? um, uh, so uh, check it out if you want to, um, especially if you've just watched the one in theaters and you've still got a bit of a Krampus itch that you need to scratch. Then check this one out. Yeah, yeah. I would say thumb mostly, up. mostly up. Yeah. yeah. All right, and now the spoilers. <laughs> All right, so it turns out that the uh, that we kind of were misleading earlier because two of those segments are actually the same segment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, okay, we already said spoilers. <laughs> yes, but we're obviously going to we normally when we say spoilers, it's like ah, well, you could see this coming a mile away. No, we are about to. We spoil had no idea where this was going. Entire movie. Yes. So this is your last chance to just go watch it because that twist is. Awesome! It is fantastic. It is really good. <laughs> it is amazing, and it is handled really well. It, yeah. Um, unlike some of the endings of other things, it yeah. Was... The ending of the Santa and Krampus story is amazing. Yes, because it turns out <laughs> that the mall that that the mall under siege that that store that that Dan uh, Will Shatner's character um, is talking about in his segment that there's a mall under siege and that people are dying and we don't know what's going to happen and he's drinking more and more as it's going on and his one of his correspondents went to that mall to check it out and has not he's not yeah um, hasn't come back hasn't come back um, and we get to the end of the Santa Claus segment and it turns out that the entire segment was a psychotic hallucination of his correspondent named Storm and Norman who hates Christmas and just had a complete psychotic break <laughs> when he went to the mall to check out the mall Santa and stuff. Yeah. So he basically took the Santa outfit and just started killing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that they were monsters and that he was Santa Claus and that he had to save Christmas. Yeah. Uh, um... That one is set up brilliantly. <laughs> yes. Very subtly. And that payoff was just amazing. Oh my god! Whoa! I did not see that coming, and the entire the entire time I was looking forward to you know Santa Claus versus Krampus, and you get that, and it yeah, is it fun. happens. That scene happens. It, it is fucking badass. But I was not expecting that extra step afterwards, where it turns out the Krampus he is fighting is actually the manager of the store or something. Yeah, yeah, he's like the mall manager, <laughs> and he's just like, no, oh, please don't kill me, Norman. Yeah. And he's like, what? Who's Norman? And then yeah, <laughs> you see what's really going on, and you're like. Oh my god, this all makes sense. It's it's I thought it was just a budgetary reason. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Santa's <laughs> workshop starts looking more and more like a mall and we assumed that it was because it's a low budget movie. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's in, it's built in. It's built in. <laughs> You know, and that whole storyline that we thought we weren't seeing, we were actually seeing yeah. the whole time. Yeah, because there's a bit in that story 
<laughs> where it's one of the funnier moments where Santa Claus has to take an elevator into the lower yes, part yes. of the fucking workshop and it's playing Christmas music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it turns out he's actually in just a normal elevator. And it was funny enough thinking that that was just the way Santa's workshop was, that it had elevators with Christmas music. But to find out that that was a, a plant for the fact that they're actually in a department store, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's brilliantly <laughs> executed and set up. You know, and that's, that's that's that whole segment is well shot. Like, the guy playing Santa Claus is having a great fucking time. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, oh, uh, the, uh, uh, trivia fact that Josh found out. Yeah, the guy yeah. who plays Santa Claus is the guy who did the voice of Beast from the Fox, the original Fox X-Men cartoon. Yeah, yeah, I looked that up uh, as, as we're watching the movie because something about him seemed familiar. And Yeah, I was like, wait, this guy's voice is familiar. And you're yeah. like, wait, he's the guy that voiced Beast in and the And that makes sense cartoon. because like, you can oh, hear it. Once once you know that, you can hear it when he talks. Yeah. Um, which is actually, like, that voice is actually perfect for a Santa Claus yeah. kind, of, kind of character. And he, he does a fantastic job and he, he gets really into the role. And you really feel for him when he has to kill his wife. And then you feel even more when he finds out it wasn't even his wife he killed. He killed an innocent yeah, woman. Yeah, he just... <laughs> <laughs> just killed like a, a store manager. You know, you know? It's like, oh my god. It's almost that that segment turns out to essentially be if you saw Silent Night, Deadly Night through the eyes of the killer. Yes. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, which and th there was and th there were homages to Silent Night. Oh, Deadly there was, Night, there was, you know? and we didn't know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't see it until it's revealed. You're like, oh my god, you know. So that one is basically like that one turns out to it. You think it's just a zombie movie with Santa Claus and he ultimately fights Krampus, and it turns out to actually be a slasher movie, movie from the point of view of the slasher with Santa Claus. Um. <laughs> My God, God, that was beautiful. It, that was that was amazing. That, I wish the whole movie oh was God, of that I, quality. I wish, I, yeah, because those two, those other two segments, the um, the one with the ghost kids, where basically oh. basically the kids are going down, like apparently beneath this school where the murders took place, there used to be uh, was it a. It was like a convent. Convent, yeah, yeah, a convent. Yeah, it's like it used to, the school was built on the remains of a church. Yes, and underneath it is where they housed all the. The women, all the all the members of the convent that were pregnant. Yeah. Um, oh no, no, it wasn't members of the convent who were pregnant. It is oh. where they took the unwed mothers. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right. And so they took took them down there so they can have the kids in secret. Um, yeah, and and the, uh, the the convent will take care of the babies. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. And apparently, in the past, there was one. According to the history that one of the characters tells us, because she did all this research about it. Apparently, in the past, there was a girl. In that, in that, in, who went to there and and claimed that she essentially was a virgin, but was still pregnant and, and was going to give birth to this kid. Yeah, and died trying to give the kid an abortion, trying to get an abortion. Yep, um, to herself. And uh, what this story ends up culminating in is essentially the ghost of that girl still haunts that place, and she's essentially every time two two people of of the opposite sex end up down there, she essentially takes over the girl and tries to get the guy to impregnate her so that she can finally have her kid. Um, yeah. And, the entire time we're watching oh, it, we're thinking God. like, oh, is this going to end up being like the birth of the Antichrist? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're thinking like, or birth of Krampus baby Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But since, since we had two Krampus stories going on, we thought maybe this one would be somehow loosely connected to Krampus too. Yeah. You know, like maybe this would be like the origin of Krampus, but when we find out the actual origin of Krampus, it's really, we'll get into that in yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the other side. Um, um, and, uh, but no, like, she fucks one of the guys, kills one of the other ones, and then the ghost uh, crucifies one of the other kids, and yeah. then she just walks off, and we're like, that's it? Yeah, like, she just walks off. Well, I feel like there's another part of the story no. we're missing. Like, and, and and being a Catholic, and being a person, no, I, I was, okay, a uh, little bit of my history. If you've seen my Red State review, uh, you will know that I was raised... Mm -hmm. um southern baptist but what you also what you may not all know is that technically my family was catholic mm -hmm. so yeah you know, okay so i i was also raised catholic so i'm watching this and i'm like all right you know um first of all jesus being born on christmas is pure bullshit yeah but yeah. if we're gonna go with that uh that the um, there is also a date a festival like a holy day which is the immaculate conception yeah, yeah which which happens in april which isn't easter 
Uh And I'm like, you know, Christmas is the birth, not the conception, because it's a specific date for the conception. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and on top of that, you're, 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 you're wondering, like, what is she impregnated with? Like, 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 what's like? Yeah. You feel like that? Should, that should, the, the kid should have been something. Yeah, it's just like here, have ghost baby. What? Yeah, yeah. You and know, she like, walks off, and I guess the horror of it is that her friends are dead, and that's true. And she basically just gave up her virginity, which is so uh, that yeah, is so whatever. like 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 that. That plot point is one of those like wow. That line of exposition felt so she warned it. Oh like, God, yeah. <laughs> Um, there's a couple of those in these other segments. Um, yeah, this is the one that has the sex scene where we're like, they should have just started with tits because it's a two teenagers. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like everyone knows, like, no, you don't g- get a full home run without circling the bases. And, when and you're that's a the one segment that had sexuality to it. You know, like, yeah. Like even the beginning when the one girl goes off to and has her own story, like when she meets up with her boyfriend and they're like making out, and he's like grabbing her ass. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be the sexy segment, right? And. <clears throat> then it it kind of skimped out on that and then the ultimate resolution of the story is just kind of like okay well now she's basically now she's got ghost baby yeah and and yeah yeah cool you keep thinking there's going to be an extra component to that like oh she not only does she have ghost baby but the baby that the that the, that the ghost has been trying to get inside of her this whole time is you know the antichrist the anti-jesus or like maybe this is the birth of krampus or something yeah you know? something of that nature something that actually legitimately ties it in with one of the other stories absolutely absolutely but it's as a result it but it still feels so disconnected from everything else oh, and it's it is super disconnected really frustrating and really unsatisfying ultimately like even though like the crucifying thing was pretty brutal but you knew it was going to happen because they set it up earlier in the movie that that's yeah. what happened to the other kids that ended up down there but it i don't know what to say other than like i had so checked out by that point that it didn't it, it didn't have the impact it probably should oh, have oh god no you know because i just started no. getting bored in the middle of that in the middle of that segment um even though it had probably the most effective actual scare scares yeah yeah we keep we keep repeating that because they actually does before they reveal what's going on it's actually really creepy yeah and then they do and then all tension drains out of the story and you're just like this is the stupidest thing until yeah. we get to the resolution of the next story <laughs> yes Alrighty then, so the next story is the girl that met up with them and then goes off with her family to meet their grandma, I believe. Yep. And, uh... (laughs) And then uh, they, the son breaks this Krampus toy that the grandma has, and she freaks out and kicks them out of the house. And then on their way home, they get attacked by Krampus, who crashes their car and then starts killing them one by one. Um, when Krampus is on screen, killing them one by one, Jason Voorhees style, it's pretty fun. It's pretty yeah. cool. You basically got the slasher with Krampus going on. You also got a cool, couple cool cameos by... Uh, uh, guy who played Death in yes, Supernatural. That's he right. Shows the, up. I forget his name, but the guy who played Death in Supernatural shows up as the groundskeeper of the grandma's of uh, the grandma's place. Uh, is he the groundskeeper or is he like her her husband? It might be her new husband. Okay. Might be the groundskeeper. It's hard to tell. I can't quite remember what the detail is. I, there. They didn't really explain it actually. Okay, well there you go. Um, I got the impression he was groundskeeper because I think it opens up with him doing gardening yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's sawing wood for the fire, I think. Right. Um, so I assume groundskeeper, but it could have been, like, you know, husband or something. Um, uh, so uh, <laughs> the main, the first problem you will find with this segment is that the main characters of this segment are exceptionally unlikable. Yeah. Um, the, the daughter is the most likable, but she's ironically the one you know the least about. She has the least character to her, which by default makes her the most likable. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but, like, the son is just a complete prick. On a dime, he'll just do something awful. And at one point in the movie, they imply that he straight up murders animals. Yeah, yeah. Like, the sister, like, main character's sister, like, describes 
him murdering animals and you know, killing them with garbage bags and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, like well, what do you think happened to all our pets? Pets, yeah. Because there's a segment when they're running from the Krampus where they go inside um, this church and the dad's bleeding because he just got hooked by Krampus and he's probably not got long to live. And the son has just been taken off somewhere, probably to be ripped to shreds by Krampus. You don't quite know. But like they, they think that maybe if they confess their sins, Krampus will let them go because Krampus is supposed to be the Punisher. Right. You know? So maybe if they confess their sins, he'll go away and leave them be. So they start confessing all their sins. And on top of everyone being complete fucking pricks, turns out that the son uh, killed, all their, killed all their pets. Um, cause I, I'm guessing the impression was that he was like a would be serial killer yeah, at some point, yeah. you know, like a Dahmer. Um, uh, the, uh, dad is, has a Ponzi scheme and is basically just, just, uh, cheating money out of everyone in his company. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why they're on this trip. So he can bilk money out of his mom. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and it turns out he did that for his wife so that his wife would stay with him and they treat it like this, like romantic moment between them. But, I just wanted them both to die at yeah. that point because they were both like the mom. You don't really learn too much about except for the fact that she's constantly jumping to the defense of the psychotic son and always bitching on the daughter, which you kind of understand why the daughter like steals shit from them because they're fucking awful parents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's just completely passive aggressive to her husband, despite the fact that her husband obviously is trying to do everything for her. Um, and the husband's also a bit of a, wussy pushover which makes him even more annoying yeah and the problem is it it's not enough to make you want to see these people die yeah yeah you know? or at least or at least if you do see them die if you make the deaths more satisfying yeah because like the kid gets, just gets taken off by a chain into the woods just taken off and you're assumed he's dead it would have been way more satisfying to see him get his fucking head ripped off or well, something. Well, I mean, I feel like we should have set up the garbage bag. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. the garbage bag thing. That would have been And great. then, like, Krampus is, like, killing him in a see, bag. that would have been even better if they all started dying based on their sins or something like yeah, that. That would yeah. have been a little more tied in. Um, but, like... If you aren't going to do that, then you kind of got to do what the Michael Doherty trick or uh, not trick or treat Krampus did, the one in theaters right now. Yeah. Because in that movie, all the main characters are really unlikable when you start the story, but as the movie goes on, you start to root for them. Yeah. You start to they start to bond as a family. They start to care for each other, and through their relationship with one another and their growth, you start to go like, actually, I don't want the Krampus to kill them anymore. You know, yeah. I kind of want them to make it out of this, even though you know that might be impossible at this point. You know, but in this movie, when they're dead, you're like, well, good, but I, I don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the in the last fucking act, all of a sudden, it doesn't oh, just become like Krampus the slasher. They straight up start doing one liners and you're like, yeah, yeah. What? I, I don't mind if you do this, but this is coming out of nowhere. Yeah, they do the, they, the, the thief daughter. Um, basically becomes the survivor final girl um, and has this whole showdown with the Krampus where she impales him in the neck and then lights him on fire with gasoline and I think it says go to hell or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Merry Christmas, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, Merry Christmas, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. which did not deliver that line at all. Mm. Did not buy it. Nope, nope. No sale. <laughs> not, not enough charisma. I would have bought it if fucking Santa Claus said that in his second. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, that happens... And then it abruptly cuts to her inside drinking tea with the grandma, who earlier in the movie just straight up kicked them out. So you're like, wait, why all of a sudden are they inside and whatever? And all of a sudden she's showing concern. Like, what, what's yeah. fucking going on? And then she just shoehorns this explanation that the way someone becomes Krampus... Oh, First of all, first of all, Krampus, when he burns up, turns into the groundskeeper, the guy, the death from Supernatural. Um, it turns out he was Krampus the whole time. Um, Which, okay, sure, all right, grandmother's, groundskeeper's Krampus. Well, that, that, your grandmother married Krampus or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. That's why she freaked out so much, because he broke the Krampus toy, and so now now she knows he's going to become Krampus, and he's going to have to punish them, and so get, get out, get out of here. Yeah. You know, they're doomed anyway. Um, but it turns out, no, the way Krampus exists is that he, it is literally the spirit of of all, all of anger on christmas yes. i guess mm. so like when if you're angry on christmas you will turn into krampus 
Like, it's that simple. And it is demonstrated as being that simple because the daughter then gets mad at her because she knew Krampus was out there and was going to kill them and didn't let them in earlier. So she turns into Krampus. And at that point, I was just like, fuck you, movie. Yeah, fuck this. See, here's the thing. They set her up as a thief. And we all know Krampus takes as opposed to Santa giving, so it made sense to have her turn into Krampus at the end to some extent thematically, but the explanation would have been way better if it's like, you killed him, now you are him. Like that, yeah. I would have bought that. You killed Krampus, you are Krampus. I would have bought that. You are that. Krampus now! That would have been simple enough, and then to have her turn into Krampus and then take revenge on the grandmother because she just abandoned her family, okay, I would have bought that. That explanation and how shoehorned it is, shoehorned it is it, in the movie it is, and how much they don't set that up at all. No, it was painful. No, and on top of that, the acting just took a nosedive in that sequence. Oh god, yeah. It, it it everything went from like a passable performance to just like just just nails on the chalkboard. And, and then when then when she started getting mad at her grandma, like that felt like such a forced anger. Oh, it did not feel natural forced. at all. It was really bad, and that, the, as much fun as I had for parts of that segment, like, that just tanked the I, whole I would thing. have even, like, I would have, I would have appreciated if she at least had turned into, like, Lady Krampus. Oh, man, that would have been awesome with, like, a metal bra or yeah, something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That would have been... But no, oh. it's like, old man Krampus with the beard and everything. It's the same like, Krampus. Oh. Yeah, it's the same actor, same everything. They didn't put the girl in the Kramp yeah. in Krampus makeup. It's just the same guy. And it's also the same Krampus that Santa fights in his hallucination, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. which is what lends you credence to it being real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand why you got it there, but at the same time, you're like, ah, yep. this, it didn't even need to be Krampus. It could just been anything. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at that point, mm -hmm. I kind of... I also, from a marketing standpoint, if that segment was a different creature, it would have made it less misleading that this movie was just Santa versus Krampus. Yeah. Um, but that's just a he neither here nor there. Um, okay, so the next segment I actually really like, which is the cop segment. And the cop segment, you know, if you recall, involves the uh, them going out, him and his family going out to chop down a tree on private property, and they sneak yeah. on, which is big no-no. Um, obviously, they have done wrong. They have been naughty, naughty. Um, and, uh, the son goes missing in the woods. They find him, but he's not quite right when they take him back. He's always scowling. He never talks and he starts just misbehaving. He starts like wrecking their presence. He starts just, um, acting abnormal. There's a part where the mom is sleeping and you see him slither oh, under God. the covers and start groping her in her sleep, which is really uncomfortable because you can tell, like, if it was either they got someone really small, or, or, or it was actually the kid's hands because it was it was yeah. it was really convincing. Whatever they did, yeah, that, because yeah. I was like, oh my Whoa. god, I am more uncomfortable than I've been this entire movie. Jesus Christ, that is that that my skin crawled. Um, not to mention the idea of someone doing that to you when you're sleeping is also just yeah. like a Jesus. Everything fuck. about it was just oh. absolutely and it was well filmed, it was well shot, it was well well executed. Um so what it turns out is um there's this there's, there's this big fat guy who owns the property that they broke into and he sees them taking off at with the tree they got and he's just like hmm this ain't good. Um, yeah. Um, and so they take off, and he tracks them down through their license plate and finally gets a hold of them and is basically like, hey, uh, uh, how's the Christmas tree? I saw her new you went Christmas tree hunt, hunt, or whatever. And she's like, oh, uh, uh, oh Jesus. You, 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 and, you know, he starts revealing, like, yeah, that was my property. Um, how's your son? <laughs> like, you know? And she's like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I mean, has he been acting weird? Has he been <laughs> doing anything? And what it turns out... The son is a changeling, <laughs> which I thought was a really fucking awesome reveal because throughout that entire segment, I was trying to figure out what it was. I'm like, D did an elf take his place? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. What's, what is it? I mean, the Santa Claus segment, we see elves, but it's possible it could have been a dark elf or yeah, you know, something. You yeah. know, and, and and it is it is technically fairy folk. Yeah, <laughs> like, it did turn out to be fairy folk. Um, a changeling, evil fairies. Um. But uh, uh, it was a really cool fucking reveal because, I, I mean, there's not many movies that have changelings in them. Yeah, not not legitimately. Nope, nope. And this was just a straight-up changeling. And 
It was actually pretty true to lore, too. It <laughs> was. It was. It came out of a tree. Yep, yep. You know, um, you yep. know, it starts doing, like, weird shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. He starts warning her. It's just like, well, here's the problem now. Now he's tasted human life, which he might not want to come back. He won't come at his own free will. But you got to get him, and you got to bring him here. But you can't. You cannot let him feel threatened. Otherwise, he will defend himself. Yeah. You know, basically giving him like like the gremlins rules. You yeah, know? It's just like, <laughs> yeah. The one, the one, the one piece of lore that they didn't bring in, but they didn't really have to, was the whole thing about iron. No, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that would have been really fucking cool. Um, also, there's moments where his reflection is like these glowing eyes. Yeah, like, fucking creepy. That scene when she looks in the window and like sees his reflection was actually legitimately kind of like, yeah. Oh, geez, probably the closest to like a scary scene, like 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 an actual scare, like um the other segment had. Um, and the dad who was, he was essentially the cop that was the first on the scene to the murder that the kids are investigating in the ghost segment. Um, and as a result of what he found there, the, the kids thrown up the way they are, um, he's kind of been going through a bit of a PTSD mental problem, like anger issues as a result of it, lashing out at people. So they kind of put him on mental leave. Yeah. Um and he ha and he hasn't he's been kind of refusing to see the doctor about it or go to therapy. Um and his wife knows something's wrong, but he's been trying to like push it out of the way and like focus on Christmas, like focus on Christmas. Like it's the happiest time of year, damn it. We're going to make it happy. We're going to yeah. go get this tree for my kids so he can have a great Christmas cuz there must be good in the world. Um but when his kid starts acting strange, and starts acting out and starts doing all these weird things, he starts to freak out. And this ultimately culminates in him finding all the presents destroyed by the kid. And he flips out, whips out his belt, and starts whipping the kid. Now, at that point, the changeling is clearly now threatened. Yeah. So when the mom kicks him out, the changeling goes after him and murders the shit out of him. <laughs> Strangles him with his belt that he, sp that he spanked him with. And saws off his hand yeah and he just plays with it like yeah she comes out and he's like playing with it like it's like nothing like it's like, yeah yeah like a, like a cat with a toy like yeah yeah just like a cat where you're you're constantly <laughs> wondering what are you thinking when you do that like murder 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 <laughs> You know, so she, at that point, she's like, oh shit, my husband's fucking dead, and that thing is not my son. And so she calls back the guy that she hung up on earlier because she didn't believe him. And it's just like, what the fuck do I do? And she's like, well, you gotta bring him back to the forest. You gotta bring him back to the forest. But he can't be threatened. He can't be. So naturally, she approaches him with a baseball, baseball bat. bat. Yeah. He feels threatened, so she has to attack him and wrap him up in a bag and then drag him to the fucking forest. And and she gets there, and the fat guys, and the fat guys, basically revealed to be the keeper of these changelings. Like yeah. they're all in the forest; they all listen to him. You don't know anything about him; they don't tell you why. And I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's a big mystery of who he is, why he's the keeper. Um, but he yells at him, and like like a, like a, like, to, like like a, like little kids. Yeah, like a like, little kid. Or, what did I tell you about doing that? Yeah. Get back in that tree. Yeah, yeah. and so he, the changeling comes out, and you actually see the changeling in his normal form, which is this really creepy. It almost looks like the mask from Behind the Mask. Yeah, you know, yeah, a little person. bit. Yeah. Um, and any uh, or or one of those um, those uh, those those little like uh, uh rocking head things from Princess Mononoke kind of looked like one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so he comes out. Um. She freaks out and accidentally shoots the the keeper guy. Yeah. To which you think that means oh now they're gonna <laughs> now they're gonna attack her or now she's the keeper. Yeah, yeah, or something. But which neither happened. Neither happened. Yeah. Basically, like like she begs the thing to give her her son back. The thing goes back in the tree and then gives her her son back, and that's the end of the segment. And I kind of like it wasn't a terrible ending. It completes the story, but. I felt like it needed one more beat. Like, yeah. just, just one more yeah. thing. Like, like personally, and this is what I was hoping was going to happen, I was hoping it was going to cut to her coming back home and there was going to be her husband standing there alive and shit, and you're like... And there's going to, like, be a reflection of him and he's going to, like, have things in his yeah. head or something. Like, yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Like, something I thought would have been cool, which would have at least have tied it into the one of the other stories a little more solidly, was if... The baby that the girl was supposed to have wasn't Jesus, but they had made it a changeling. That would have been cool too. Yeah, the 
That would have been awesome if it was tied in in some way, because, like, some of these other stories feel like they're loosely connected in some way. Yeah, yeah, because, like, all the stories that feel like they're legitimately connected are pretty good. Yeah. But, it, 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 oh, all the ones that don't work are super aggravating. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're just sort of like, why is this even here? Because the thing that was so great, the trick that was so great about Trick or Treat mm -hmm. is that all the stories tied into yeah, each yeah. other and they were all great yeah and they're there is all not good a, there's not a bad segment in that in that story in that movie at all you know I, some people disagree with me and those people are wrong <laughs> yeah but in this one what you basically got is you got one okay story two bad ones and two really fantastic ones yeah 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 pretty much like we, and the two that were really fantastic are essentially the same story anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's worth watching the movie just for that. Well, because those two, like every time it cuts back to one of those two, yeah, the movie gets rolling again. You know, yeah, yeah, you you feel like you're you're watching the movie you came to see. You know, and the changeling one is is good because every time it cuts back, you're constantly trying to figure out, okay, what is it? What's going on? Yeah, here? and then when you do figure out what it is, you're now like, okay, how the fuck are she she gonna get out of this? You know? Yeah, like if that had been like the weakest story. I'd have been really happy. Oh, yeah. This would have been a great anthology. As it stands, it's just a pretty good one that has a lot of fun stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's really it's really weird, like, judging an, antholo an anthology film because often some of the segments will fall flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, a pretty good so, example is uh, Creepshow 2. Creepshow 2 is a really good example. Two really good segments. One, one really, really dull one. Blah, that's smoking Indian ones. And the worst part about Creepshow 2 is that's the first segment, so it, you can turn out, tune out really fast. Yeah, yeah. And miss the it's, two really good ones. Yeah, like the raft and, you know, thanks for the ride, lady. That one is the best. That's one of the best segments in all Creepshow yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. I love that bit, you know? <laughs> thanks for the ride, lady. Thanks for the ride, lady. Is... Of, it's so fucking fantastic. But the Native American one is not only is it the longest, it is just oh, so God. bad. Like I, I, I mean, like even if you if if you cut like a good like ten minutes out of that one, it would be much more tolerable. And you didn't put it first. And you didn't put it first. If that was the middle one, you probably would have survived. The yeah. Oh, um. Man. So yeah. Um. So <sighs> tales. Oh, a, a, Christmas a, a Christmas horror story. A Christmas horror story. Sorry. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there because we've been having so many technical difficulties. You might have noticed all the random cuts in between. That's because we've been having some issues with the camera shutting off while we're recording. Um, we're kind of mad at it right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to bed with Which, if you terrible. watched my last vlog, you also know that we had audio problems last time. So hopefully this time it'll be hunky-dory. Yeah, I, I really think it was the cord connecting the microphone. Oh, it probably the was. Camera, it probably know? was. Because uh, so far, like, I've been going back and looking at it, all sounds fine. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so, a Christmas horror story. Um... I want to I want to want to talk about one thing for a second, and that's that... The marketing for this movie was so obviously trying to be a cash grab for the Michael Doherty movie that it actually misled what the movie was. Yeah, it did. Like, all the scenes happened, but they didn't tell you it was an anthology. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea from the trailers. I'm sure if I read some more synopses on, like, horror sites, I probably would have caught that. But I didn't when the trailers came out, and the poster just had the shot of um, Krampus and the uh, Santa Claus about ready to go at it. And the trailer built up to Krampus and Santa Claus going at it and mainly showed you the Krampus attacking things. Yeah. So it gave the impression that this was a movie about Krampus attacking a town and Santa Claus, grizzled old war vet Santa Claus, must come to the rescue one last time. Yeah. But no, it's not the movie yeah, at all. It's the movie I had in my head going in. And at first I was a little disappointed that it turns out the movie's not that at all. Um, it took us a minute to realize we were watching an anthology at first. Yeah, like, it was really confusing. I was like, you're like, what? How are any of these connected? Which is something I never had a problem with with Trick or Treat. Then again, I also kind of knew Trick or Treat was an anthology when I watched it. But Well, they, they, they moved between the stories so much. There's so much 
smoother. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like Pulp tree. Fiction, you know, yeah. like really. Yeah, you're like, transition. whoa, we're doing something else now. Well, like, well, whereas in this one, I all thought I thought it was going to be one continuous story, but it was just going through all these characters and they're going to culminate into something. Until we started to realize, oh no, wait, that's the end of that story. Okay, this is an anthology. Yeah. You know, and then I looked it up, sure enough, it's an anthology, which was pretty cool. And there's really some fun stuff in this movie, despite that. And obviously, if it was the movie I had in my head, I would not have had that awesome ending. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But I, I am kind of mad at I'm kind of mad at the marketers because, like, I wish they had mo come up with, like, a poster that more accurately reflected the movie instead of misleading me on what the movie was. Yeah, and it was, was really... Uh, but at the same time... They did market the best thing that they had, yes. which was that segment. Yes, I could have done with the whole movie being that. Yeah, much. yeah, like that was great. But like, just god damn it, like th those two really bad ones needed work. Yeah, they definitely did. You know, like it. I I'm I'm just gonna be just completely honest. <sighs> Despite the fact that most carols are about Jesus, that is the least fun aspect. Of fucking Christmas. I thought that was kind of funny because we had that whole Immaculate Conception ghost story. How much, even though that was very religious, it felt very like, you know, like, 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 um, like The Conjuring or any sort of like religious yeah. horror movie, like, like, like The Exorcist. It felt really out of place in a Christmas movie, even though you know there's some bases in Christmas and Christianity, but that blatant actually felt so un-Christmas to me. It did. It, like even with the whole like nativity scene sequence where they where they yeah. go into that one room, which I don't remember if we mentioned this uh, because we had so many like shutdowns on it, but like I'm still annoyed at that segment that like you when they're in the basement of it's supposed to be the underground it's supposed to be the bottom floor of of the uh, the school is supposed to be built on top of the convent and underground below is the the only layers of the convent that still exist um but it's underground yet there's all there these windows. windows that clearly look like they're looking outside now even if they're windows for vents you gotta wonder why they wouldn't just break the windows when they're trapped inside. Why would they be four feet high? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and on these top are obvious windows. Even the bathroom that they go into has a big obvious yeah, yeah. window. Yeah, you can lift up. You could like, lit you could walk out of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if it's a vent, you might be able to crawl out. You yeah. Know, it's like hey, yeah. So that that is how bad that segment is that you found yourself actually doing the horror movie questioning the logic thing, you know, because it's yeah. so bad you start questioning people's decisions and you're just so checked out, you know. But the Santa Claus segment and the William Shatner segment and and even the Changeling segment are good and fun and enough to check out this movie in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. You know, so basically if you um if you like the Michael Doherty one, or you need another Krampus fix or something like that, then uh, Christmas Horror Story. Christmas Horror Story is pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's one amazing bit, two bad ones, and an okay one. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, uh, I guess thumbs kind of up. Yeah. Yeah. Go my way. Thanks for the ride, lady. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>